Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Shang. North Korea is battling its worst economic downturn in decades. The regime believe it is imperative to boost morale. How? By releasing a biography of leader Kim Jong Un. This is a 621-page book titled The Great Man and the Age of the Powerful Nation. Narratives of Mr. Kim's life have been published in North Korea textbooks before, but this new book appears to be the first official account of the first decade of his rule. It is released by state-controlled Pyongyang Publishing House. The biography outlines North Korea's policy positions on nuclear weapons and U.S.-led sanctions, but it also champions Mr. Kim's meeting with former President Donald Trump, dedicating 15 pages to their exchanges in Singapore and at Korea's demilitarized zone. The book says this about the 2018 Singapore summit. Dear Marshal Kim Jong-un said during his exclusive meeting with the U.S. President that we are at the footsteps of a new beginning. A second Trump-Kim meeting a year later in Vietnam where talks abruptly broke down without a deal received just a glancing reference. The Kim biography was published December 30th in North Korea, but an online version of the Korean language book accessible outside the Kim regime was recently uploaded by Yuri Minzung Kyuri, a Pyongyang-linked propaganda website. The book which lists no authors, comes as the country is suffering its worst economic downturn in decades, largely owed to lockdowns and border closures ordered by the regime to combat COVID-19. It is to tell North Korean people that we can survive this simply because we are great. The biography contains seven chapters and 17 subchapters, but no photos, nor does it break new policy ground. The book calls the country's nuclear weapons sword of guaranteeing peace. It says that economic sanctions are unjust and joint US-South Korean military drills provocative. Nonetheless, the book repeatedly highlights how the ruling Kim's love for the North Korean people is ever prevailing. One tale describes how Mr. Kim once posed for a photo with an ill woman whose life wish had been to meet the country's supreme leader. Unlike depictions of his father and grandfather, Kim Jong-un's biography, at least by North Korean standards, adhere to real-life events. North Korean leaders were long depicted as having mythical power, such as turning pine cones into bullets. Inside the country, narratives of the Kim leaders are widely read and taught in schools under the subject of revolutionary activities. Defectors say, Mr. Kim's grandfather, North Korea's founder and first ruler, wrote a multi-volume autobiography during his rule. Those stories were a must-read for all students on top of the regular textbooks that discuss the ruling Kims. Getting good grades in other subjects is meaningless unless you score high on the revolutionary subjects, de facto say. Kim Jong-un's biography closes with a section titled Spinning the World Under the Axis of Sovereignty and Justice which discusses his meetings with world leaders like Mr. Trump, Chinese President Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in. There has never been a time when all the world has been this focused on our people's greatness and the dignity in our 5,000-year history, the book says. Mr. Kim made a decisive decision to meet these world leaders, according to the book elevating North Korea's standing in the world to a fundamentally higher place than ever. The reality on the ground points a much grimmer picture. Some outside economists estimate North Korea's economy shrank by up to 10% last year. 
North Korea's trade with China plummeted by 80% in 2020, according to a recent report from the Seoul-based Korean International Trade Association, which tracks cross-border trade. China accounts for roughly nine-tenths of North Korea's annual trade. Fearful of coronavirus transmission, the Kim regime more than a year ago sealed off its borders, banned foreign tourism, and locked down cities. The North's own COVID-19 measures delivered more damage to its economy than U.S.-led sanctions ever did, according to the KITA report. In 2018, sanctions only succeeded in denting 50% of North Korea's trade with China, KITA figures show. Mr. Kim himself, on multiple occasions, have acknowledged North Korea's economic failure. At a meeting with senior Workers' Party officials last month, he criticized the top economic advisors for unilaterally lowering production goals set earlier in the year for electricity, construction, and the light industry, according to state media. Mr. Kim fired a senior economic official in February, just a month after his appointment. The situation has gotten so dire that basic staples now cost three or four times versus before the pandemic, said Alexander Masagora, the Russian ambassador to Pyongyang, in an interview published by the Russian news agency Interfax last month. It's a challenge to buy even such basic goods as pasta, flour, vegetable oil, and sugar, and there are no decent clothes or footwear. Mr. Masagora said, There is an old Chinese saying, when there is no food, you can draw a pancake to suppress your hunger. I guess in North Korea, it is Kim Jong un's biography. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.